Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to a $450 gaming PC build video. Now, I know I've been doing these build videos a lot more frequently, and that's because I've been wanting to upload more content, and I decided to stop being lazy and whatnot, and I've been working on a bunch of uh, different stuff, working on a bunch of different regional videos and whatnot, so expect a lot more videos in the coming weeks. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, let's get straight into this build with the CPU. I went with the AMD FX6300. It's a 3.5 gigahertz and 4.1 gigahertz turbo socket AM3 plus 95 watt 6 core processor now I got a bundle deal with this on Newegg uh, which it's basically the CPU and the hard drive for the combined price of minus $13 I've explained this in previous videos but if you go on Newegg there's a bunch of combo deals that uh, are on the site and it's basically two CP uh, PC parts and you save a little bit of money not a lot of money but a little bit of money is you know better than no money at all so I went with that that basically gives you an FX 6300 and a Western Digital WD Blue one terabyte uh, for the combined price of both $13 off so why the hell not uh, the CPU is really good and it's only a hundred and ten dollars right now holy shit Intel you better drop that price of the i3 because the i3 does not compete at all with the FX 6300 especially the 6300 being thirty dollars cheaper uh, no reason to go with an i3 right now. The 6300, what's great about it is it's a 6-core CPU, so it's exceptionally well for a budget CPU and things like video editing, live streaming, and Photoshop and things like that, but it's also exceptionally well in games because it has four physical cores, and with the move on to the next generation, more and more games are going to start utilizing multi-core technology. So having a 6-core CPU at this low of a price is really something to consider. No reason to get an i3. Uh, I couldn't fit in a... Um, a CPU cooler into the budget of this PC so uh, the stock cooler is gonna get the job done but down the line if you do want to pick up a Hyper 212 that's something easily that you're gonna be able to pick up for the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte GA-78 LMT now this motherboard comes to the market at about $55 after a $10 mail-in rebate depending on where you shop you might be able to get it cheaper it also has integrated ATI Radeon HD 3000 so if your graphics card does ever take a shit you're gonna have something to fall back on um, I know a lot of people don't consider that but that is a nice feature to have. There's an AM3 Plus motherboard, and it's a micro ATX motherboard. Obviously, for $55, you're not going to get a fully functional motherboard or, or fully featured. What I like about this motherboard is that it has four RAM slots, so you can upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM in the future if you want to. So that's a nice feature to have. Obviously, you can't crossfire SLI, but at a $450 budget, I don't think you're going to be looking that direction. So this motherboard's a really good choice for $55. For the RAM, I went with G Skill Rip Jaws series 4 gigabytes uh, running at 1333 speed this is about 33 bucks so one stick of 4 gigabytes uh, you can add three more sticks of that down the line and uh, I would highly recommend that you add one stick in the next six months to a year because 8 gigabytes is going to start becoming more and more of a standard with more and more games utilizing it especially considering it's only going to cost you an extra 32 dollars um, having 8 gigabytes of RAM is definitely something to look at and having 4 gigabytes is going to be good for now but in the future like I said 8 gigabytes is going to start becoming Becoming more and more of a necessity right now four gigabytes is going to be perfectly fine uh, especially for lower end games or even higher end games I mean Battlefield 3 has a requirement of uh, four gigabytes of RAM that's recommended actually uh, it's minimum is two gigabytes so uh, you know four gigabytes is going to be perfectly fine for now for the graphics card, I went with the Sapphire Radeon HD 7770 GHz edition. This is this comes to the market at about $85 after a $20 mail-in rebate. Yeah, pretty damn good deal. And I know I'm actually spending more money on the CPU than the graphics card in this build, but the FX6300 was such a good value at $110 that I really wanted to get that into the build. And the 7770 is still a very capable graphics card. Uh, really good at lower resolution gaming. So if you're playing games at like 1280 by 720 or even 1680 by 1050 this card is really going to do really well uh, playing games like even higher end games like Battlefield 3 Crisis 3 at lower resolutions like 1680 by 1050 or 1280 by 720 it's going to be able to run those games at fairly high settings even at 1080p you can run games like Battlefield 3 Crisis 2 at 1080p at medium settings medium to high settings depending on what kind of frame rate you want so this is a very capable graphics card for only $85 really good value and this card keeps going cheaper and cheaper in price so really hard to not recommend this card at that low of a price
For the power supply, I went with the Corsair CX500M. Now, this is a modular power supply. It's 500 watts, and it's about $40 after a couple mail-in rebates, a couple promo codes from Newegg. So, really good value considering you're getting a modular power supply, 80 plus bronze certified, and it's 500 watts, which is going to be more than enough to power this build. The 7770 is very low on power consumption. The FX6300 is only 95 watts, so 500 watts is going to be perfectly fine for the build. And also, it's modular, so if you are the kind of guy that likes really good cable management, it's going to help a lot, uh, help out a lot in that aspect if you are into cable management, which I think most people are. For the hard drive, I went with the Western Digital WD Blue 1TB. Again, that comes packed in with the CPU for a uh, subtracted $13 off uh, cost. Like I said always, if you have a hard drive that you can salvage from a previous build, you can skip this entirely, or you can grab a 60 gigabyte SSD, or actually put that uh, put that towards the graphics card, which I'd recommend more. Uh, upgrade to the graphics uh, this graphics card to like a 7850 or 7870, depending on what your budget can allow. Finally, for the case, I went with the NZXT Source 210. Now, this is only a $25 case, which would make you think that it's pretty shitty, but that's not the case at all. It actually looks pretty good, in my opinion. I like the white, uh, the white. Uh, case version better. Um, I'm sounding really racist as hell, but that's not what I mean. I just like the white version better than the black version, and goddamn, I came out off as such a racist bastard right there, but I like the NZXT Source 210. It doesn't matter what color you get it in. It's a really good price, mid tower case. I'm gonna fucking stop sounding really racist, so yeah, with that being said, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, tell me what you think about this build, and uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned for more videos. Got a lot of work to do, a lot of, got a lot of videos to record, so yeah, that being said, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good day and peace. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.